Because it comes tonight to preach, Lord, you just give the words, God, to say, Lord, and we'll change our hearts and our lives, God, that we'll, we'll just take your word into our heart, God, into a lost and dying world, God, to, to tell others about you, God, that would make a difference, Lord, that they would come to know you, Lord. We, God, got so many needs in our church, Lord, those that are sick, God, in the hospitals, Lord, and shut-ins, Lord, uh, God, I pray for those that's had deaths in their family, God, to give them the peace and the comfort, God, that, that only you can, Father, we Lord, we thank you for this offer, God, we thank you for providing for us, God, Every need, God, we've ever had. We just want to tell you we love you. God, just thank you again for this day. We want to tell you we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amazing grace. Sing it to him. Fellowship and tell somebody what you can praise God for. Amen. Fellowship with each other. Amen.
praise the Lord for the day. Praise the Lord for His goodness. Appreciate the songs uh, of Zion uh, that we sing. Just an a update on J.D. Uh, they've got him off the sedation uh, medication. He's alert. He's responding. But he is still on a ventilator. Uh, so uh, just c- please continue to pray uh, for J.D. and uh, that family. Just ask God to help. And also pray for Lori uh, Kluwer. I uh, don't know how many uh, know this or got a hold of it this morning. Uh, she was uh, taking her medication this morning. Somehow it's got hung uh, in a place it shouldn't have got hung. Uh, and it sounds like it's kind of over her windpipe because she can't breathe real good either. And it, every time she swallows, she feels it. She's been at Valdez all day long. If it does not change uh, before 9 o'clock, if it don't change before that, they're going to try to do something and go get it at 9 o'clock uh, tonight. So if you will, uh, just uh, pray for Lori uh, uh, in that situation, her and Taranda. Uh, they've been there at the hospital, uh, I guess, the biggest part of the day. So if you will, just uh, lift them up and pray for them and uh, ask God's will to be done. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10 tonight. Hebrews, chapter number 10. We'll ask the Lord to help us tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, in the house of God, we'll try to uh, ask the Lord just what He wants for us tonight. And I'll go ahead and tell you, I got way too many notes. I was looking at them there, I got way too much stuff. Uh, uh, I, yeah, we'll be here till midnight, and I know, I know y'all don't want to be here that long. So, uh, but I appreciate the goodness of the Lord, uh, the goodness of the day. Uh, the thought that is on my heart is faith unwavering. Uh, When you look at faith through the Scripture, through a biblical view of Scripture, Jesus talked about some that had no faith, some that had little faith, and others that had great faith. Here in the book of Hebrews, the writer of the book of Hebrews, and I'm like preacher said this morning, they, they, they tell us Paul did, some say other people did. I don't know who wrote it. I just know... Uh, it's uh, all God's Word, amen, and uh, it's, it's uh, in our Bible, and uh, we can learn from it, we can glean from it, and ask God uh, to speak to us through the book of Hebrews. But the writer of Hebrews talks about unwavering faith, a faith that is not in, a faith that is not out, a faith that is not up and down, it is consistency. That is what I've tried to tell the youth, uh, these that that's how we live our life. That's that's Christianity. We're the same. We try to be the same today. Tomorrow we'll wake up and we'll do the very same things again. We'll pray. We'll read our word. We'll try to witness. We'll do. It's just that consistency uh, that that we're trying to get in our life. And uh, the the writer of Hebrews uh, instructs us uh, to have unwavering faith. Faith that uh, without wavering. Uh, and we're going to read these verses of Scripture. We'll start reading Hebrews chapter number 10 and verse number 22. And uh, gives us some real good uh, counsel or instruction or guidance, however you want to look at it. Uh, this, is, this is where we go to uh, to get our uh, guidance uh, from the Word of God. And it helps my life. I have to apply it to my life. If I just read it, and I never attempt to do what it asks me to do, then I'm really not looking to for the guidance that he gives in that. But he gives us some instruction or guidance, counsel, uh, if you will, uh, through th- th- this these scriptures right here. Verse number 22, uh, uh, he says in this verse, it said, Let us draw nigh with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled, from the evil of the uh, the evil uh, communications of our body, washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of faith without wavering. There it is, that we would not waver, that we would stand true, that we would be uh, the same every day without wavering. Let us hold fast the profession, the profession of faith that we have made in Jesus Christ, the faith that we are a Christian. He said without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. 
Aren't you glad for the promises? But let's go on. It says, but let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as ye see the day approaching. Let's pause for a word of prayer and ask God to help us. Father, we love you. We praise you. Thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you for the word of God. We pray, God, tonight that you would uh, wash over us, God, that you would speak to us through your word, that you would give us uh, wisdom. God, we come understanding, God, uh, we need your help. We need your uh, guidance. We need your uh, input in our life. And, Father, we come tonight asking, God, that you would watch our, uh, wash over our lives, God, that we would be have unwavering faith, that we would live our lives, God, every day, God, without wavering, that we would not be in and out and up and down, but we would just be consistent in our Christian walk. God, help us today. As we look into your word, God, I pray that you would speak to us, and God, you help us, and we'll give you glory, we'll give you honor, and give you praise uh, for that what you do, and we ask it in Christ's name. We, amen and amen. We, we think about faith without wavering faith every day that we are going to be the same every day uh, that God has encouraged us uh, may God help us to have a walk that we walk by faith preacher uh, used that scripture to this morning that we walk by faith and not by sight many, many of us uh, have to people of this day and time want to see it to believe it but that's not faith faith is seeing to believe uh, and we've got to get to that place in our lives that we have a walk of faith. It don't mean that I understand everything. That don't mean that I have the answer to everything. It just means that I am looking to Christ. I'm trusting His Word. I'm trusting His presence. I'm trusting His guidance in my life each and every day. May the Lord help us to have uh, uh, unwavering faith uh, each and every day that we would not stray to the left or the right. God speaking uh, to Joshua instructed him that he would be stable in his faith. The Bible tells us in Joshua 1, 7, it says, Only uh, be thou strong and very courageous. Hey, don't sound like any fear factor there. He's encouraging him to be strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do all, according to all the law which Moses thy servant commanded you. Listen. Then he said, turn not, from, uh, not, turn not to uh, it to, to the right hand or the left. We got to be straight. We got to be consistent. We can't be following and chasing every wind of doctrine, as the Bible tells us. He is telling us to walk a straight line, to be consistent each and every day. Then he goes on and it says that thou mayest prosper and whithersoever thou goest. That's what the promise was to Joshua, that you be faithful. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Just follow instruction. Just follow the instruction that God gives us. God has given his word, and we are to follow his instruction. We are to obey it with simple obedience. That's what God is looking for. Uh, that is every each and every day. Just be obedient to do what we know God would have us to do and be faithful to do what God has asked us that we stay on course if you will Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse number 27 says this turn not to the right hand nor the left remove thy foot from evil friend I'm going to tell you tonight if we are following evil if we have evil intentions and evil motivations and evil uh, guides that we are following then we are going to stray we are going to go away from what God has asked us to do uh, the book of Proverbs asked us right there he's told us don't turn to the right don't turn to the left be consistent Just remove your foot from evil evil will lead us in the wrong paths uh, it won't lead us in the paths of righteousness it will lead us in the paths of destruction and we need to understand that tonight that God help us that we stay uh, committed to Christ committed to prayer and be faithful in our faith that we are faithful the writer of Hebrews is going to help us try to obtain that uh, tonight 
if we're struggling somewhere in that, that we may obtain uh, that way, unwavering faith that God here is talking to us about. And the first thing I want us to see is we can approach the Lord. Uh, he has told us, let us draw not, let us draw near with a true heart when full assurance of faith. When is the last time that you approach God? I hope that we've already done that today, uh, that we've been in prayer, that we've been praying, that we approach God and we come to Him and we cast all our care upon the Lord because He cares for us. We can uh, approach the Lord. We, we can come to Him at any time. Uh, all through Scripture, He instructs us to come to Him. Hey, tonight, God help us tonight that we wouldn't seek other avenues, but we would seek the Lord. If you've got a problem, if you have a need, have you, have you come to the Lord? Have you asked the Lord or have you, have you approached Him with the burden of your heart, the burden of your family, the burden of your friends? Have you approached God and asked Him to get involved in this? Hey, that's what we need to do. We, need to, we have access tonight, hey, through faith, you say, well, I've prayed, I don't see any change. I've prayed, I don't feel any different. Hey, it's not a feeling. It is by faith that we operate. It is not that I feel like it or if I don't feel like it. It is that I know that God has saved me. I have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether I feel it or whether I don't feel it. Hey, and, and some days you do, some days you don't. Hey, but I'm telling you, it is not based on feeling. It is based on faith. What we do, we do by faith. We pray by faith. We seek God by faith. And we approach Him by faith. We bring, we bring our petitions uh, to the Lord. We ask Him to, to, uh, for our petitions. We make our petitions known. But uh, Matthew chapter number 11 and verse number 28 He says, Come unto me. That's Jesus. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for the invitation that he give us to approach him. Come unto me. Hey, glory to God tonight. When is the last time that you've come? When is the last time that something's been on your heart that you've brought to the Lord? Listen, come tonight. Approach him uh, through prayer. Approach him with the burden of your heart. Approach him. Let him know what's going on in your life, which he knows anyway. You're not going to tell him anything that he does not know. Hey, but I want to tell you, sometimes it's just good to hear it from you. Amen. Hey, I, with my children, most of the time I know what's going on in their life, but it's good for them to have that communication, for them to talk to you about it. Hey, that helps you sometime. Hey, and that, that keeps that relationship uh, intact. So we encourage you tonight to approach the Lord. Uh, whatever, it, he said, come, come unto me. When's the last time that you've come to him? Labor and are heavy laden. Are you weary? Are you tired? Are you wore out? Listen, bring it to the Lord tonight. Listen to this verse of Scripture in the Old Testament. Isaiah 118. It says, come now. I like that. Without delay. He said, come now. There's no time to wait. There's no time uh, to say, wait just a little bit. I'll do it the next day. No, he said, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though, uh, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Glory to God tonight. Hey, he said, come now. Hey, you can approach him tonight. When? Now, right now. You can come now to the Lord. That's what Isaiah said. Hey, and that's what we've got to understand. There is no time that we cannot approach the Lord. He said, come now. Come today. Come every day. And come often. Hey, what does that do? That helps us uh, that we're exercising faith in Him. I don't have the ability. You don't have the ability. I don't have the capability of doing anything. But Christ does. As we heard this morning, there's nothing impossible uh, with Him. Hey, we can come to Him. So I want to encourage you tonight to come to the Lord. Uh, James uh, 4, 8 says this. Come nigh to the Lord. Hey, he's telling us, come, come, come. We're, we're reading these scriptures over and over. He said, and listen, this is a good thing, right? Listen, this is a great thing. It says, come nigh to God, 
and he will draw nigh unto you. Glory to God. If you get you start coming close to God, he's going to start moving towards you. Hey, glory to God tonight. Hey, we can approach him. We have access tonight through faith. It says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Oh, my, tonight, may we come before the Lord tonight with clean hands and, 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 and a pure heart. A lot of times, what keeps us from approaching the Lord is when we have dirty hands and a dirty heart. May God help us tonight to clean our hands from sin and purify our heart from maybe evil thoughts and evil ways. And he says, you double-minded. Let's don't be double-minded. Um, God help us tonight to have faith in Christ. Hebrews 4, 16 says this. He said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that, I may, that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in the time of need. Do you, what, what is your need tonight? What do you have tonight that you need to bring before the Lord? He said, let us, he said, come boldly into the throne room. It's not that I come arrogant or if I come cocky before the Lord, but I come humbly before the Lord, understanding that He hears me, that He's opened up the avenue of faith in my heart, that I have faith enough to pray, that I have faith enough to seek His face, that I have to seek His word. It is that kind of humility that we come, but we come with much assurance that Christ hears us tonight. Christ is not deaf. Christ is definitely not dead, amen. And Christ hears us when we bring those petitions of faith. When is the last thing that you've asked the Lord for that is going to require faith? That something you can't do, something I can't do, something we can't do, but it is going to take God to do it. And if it gets done, God's going to get the glory and God's going to get the honor and the praise for it. When is the last thing that we've brought to God and say it's out of my hands, I can't, we can't do anything, and, but I'm seeking you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to keep asking. I'm going to keep seeking. I'm going to come before your throne uh, of grace and ask for help. When is the last time that you approach God? He said in verse number 22, he said, Let us come nigh and with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience, glory to God, and your body washed with a pure word. Hey, glory to God tonight. What hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Look with me on in verse number 23. The next thing, up here. We've got to up here to some things. Up here. He said, let us hold fast the profession of faith without wavering. We've got that word. Uh, I looked it up. Uh, the, the word up here, it means to hold fast, to stick, to cleave. Glory to God tonight. Hey, are we sticking to our faith? Hey, that's what we need to do. We need to adhere to our faith before the Lord. Let us hold fast the profession of faith. It is not on my ability or your ability. What Christ done on the cross is a finished work. He said it is finished. It ain't up to me. It ain't up to you. Hey, it is Jesus' finished work on Calvary. And we bless his name. And we are to stick to that profession of faith that we made. Don't go backward. I've told the youth when we finished our summer, man, God gave the youth a great summer together. But I told them after we got through the summer and got going back to school, and I've told them, I said, we cannot stay where we are. We will either progress or we will regress. We cannot stay the same. And listen, there's none of us in here can stay where we are because you will go backward instead of going forward. We have to be progressing. We have to come and we have to hold fast that profession of faith. Hey, we have to use our faith every day. And that's what he's trying to get us to see that we hold fast the profession of faith without wavering. There is no time off. There is no days off. There is no time that we just say, well, we'll pick up again at another day. No, we have to come to that place in our hearts that we come, we stick to the Lord. We stick to our profession of faith. We cleave unto 
the Lord. May God help us that we hold fast the profession of faith of the Lord. Deuteronomy 11:22 it says to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to cleave unto him. Are we cleaving tonight unto him? A lot of times we cleave on my ability or some ability or uh, other avenues of, 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 of achieving what we want to achieve. But may God help us tonight that we cleave to him, that we put everything else aside, that we make him the most important thing in my life, that I cleave unto him, that I hold fast that profession of faith. Deuteronomy 13, uh, 4 says this, You walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him. My question tonight, are we serving him? How are you serving him? And then it says again, and to cleave unto him. The word cleave means to stick, to join, to be joined, to stay close. Listen, guys, tonight, if I'm going to be, if we're going to be successful Christians, you know how we're going to do it? We're going to be doing it by adhering to our faith. We're going to have to stay close. We're going to have to stick to our faith. We're going to have to be uh, uh, cleaving to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we can't take it or leave it. We can't get sidetracked. We've got to keep him in front of us each and every day that we are walking in the newness of life and, and asking Christ to help us that we stick to him to, be, to stick close. I like that. Stick close. Listen, Peter followed the Lord at a distance. You know, when he was walking down, they arrested the Lord. Peter ended up in the world, warming his hands in the, uh, in the world's fire down there and denied the Lord. Hey, if you're staying, sticking close, you won't, we won't end up there. God help us that we stay close to the Lord in all of our ways, that we stick close to the Word of God. Is it, is it, and I don't want to say a habit. Listen, it's not a habit. We shouldn't, I don't know if, if that's, but I, I, want, I want to talk to him. I want him to talk to me. I don't talk to my parents because it's a habit. Right? I talk to my parents because I love them. They've been good to me. And, and I don't talk to my wife because it's a habit. I talk to her because I love her. And she's been good to me. And I want to love her. And I want to know how I can help her. Hey, that's the relationship that we, that we need. It don't need to be a habit. It needs to be a love relationship that we seek the Lord each and every day, that we seek Him in His Word, and, and we, we listen to Him. When we read the Word of God, are we listening to Him for Him to speak to us? Listen, He'll speak to us through His Word. Are we seeking Him close in His Word? Are we sticking close to His Word? Are we walking close to the Lord daily, day after day, that you and I spend time walking with the Lord? You say, what do you mean by walking with the Lord? Hey, uh, uh, that we allow God to use us wherever we are. If we go somewhere, that we try to be a witness to somebody, that we talk about the Lord when we get in a conversation Listen, they tell me I talk to a wall. I talk to a bunch of people. But I always try to bring it around and ask them, Are you saved? Do you know the Lord? Uh, I went in the uh, Walmart the other day to pick up some good old medication. Amen. And there was a gentleman in there. And uh, he is 80-some years old. And uh, we, we began to talk. He liked to talk much as I did. And at the end of it, I asked him, I said, Can I ask you something? I said, Are you a saved man? Do you know the Lord? Uh, are you? And he said, Yes, sir. And I've been saved. And he began to tell me. It is wonderful. Listen, just bring it, bring it around. That's walking with the Lord. That we spend time with Him. And then we get instruction for him. And then God uses us in our life. Now, is that pinning a rose on me? No. Hey, that's pinning a rose on the Lord because we have that relationship. And it's just my awareness around me that what's going on, that we are to be witnessing for the Lord. Take every opportunity to witness for the Lord. Stay close to the Lord. Up here, that's what he said, hold fast. Hey, I love what preacher Nikki says. Everybody needs 
Who? E who? Everybody needs Jesus. Hey, I love it. Hey, that is so true. I don't care what walk of life it is that we could be a witness somehow in their life. If God intersects our life, I think that's an opportunity that God has given us to be a witness to that person. Hey, and we ought to take it every time. So we need to stay close to the Lord, walking daily with Him. No time off, I've done said that. No time off, no days off that we stay to, uh, close to the Lord. Then look at verse number 24. We want to talk about admonishing. Uh, I love the church. Amen. And we're here, and as Christian brothers and sisters, he, he has given us instruction that we are to admonish one another. He said, let us consider one another. That'll go a long way in 2019 because we are in a selfie mode in 2019. It, if it ain't about me and mine, then we're, we're going somewhere else. Listen, it is not about that. Listen, as Christians, walking by faith, adhering to the faith, admonishing one another in faith, hey, it is that we look on each other. We pay attention to each other. Let us consider one another. Wow! When is the last time we've considered one another? And then it says to provoke unto love and to good works. Praise God. Hey, that'll change a church. If we would live that one verse right there, that would change, that would change everybody in the church. That we would consider one another. That I would not look down my nose or I would try to figure out if this, they'd quit doing this and do this, man, their life would be different. I don't see that he calls me to do that. He don't ask me to figure out everything. He just tells me to consider one another. God help us tonight that we would consider, admonish one another. Consider one another. Provoke. When's the last time? Provoke unto love and to good works. Glory to God. We ought to consider, first of all, one another. Romans 12, 3 says, For I say, though the grace given unto me to every man... Uh, that, uh, that is among you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think but think soberly according as God has dealt every man a measure of faith not to think of myself more highly than I, ought, than, than I am more highly than I ought to think listen I'm no better than you amen I'm no better the ground is level at the foot of the cross and as Christians Walking by faith, not having unwavering faith, we can't adopt the mentality that we're better than other people because of what they do or what they've done or how they're doing or how they're acting or anything else. Hey, let us consider one another. May God help us today not to be so selfie and inclusive that all I see is myself and worry about me, but I would worry about other people. And I've said this I don't know how many times. When we go to a hospital or go visit somebody or whatever, you're, you're going down there and you think, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to try to be a blessing to them. I don't know how many times, time after time after time, when you go in considering them that you end up with a blessing. I don't know if they gained anything out of me being there, but I gained a whole ton. I'm coming out of a hospital room or a house and I, God's just loaded my wagon with blessings. Hey, consider one another. When is the last time that we have considered each other? That we would not look down on each other. And that we would not criticize or put down. That we would consider. And then he said that we would provoke them. Provoke them to love and of good works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, that we love one another, that we love the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that we would provoke them to love Christ more when they talk to you, when they share with you, that we would provoke them to love Christ, to love their family, to love each other more uh, than we ever have before, that we would provoke, provoke them to good works. 
that we would encourage good works. God help us tonight that we would do that. Colossians 3.16 says this, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let me say this. I think every born-again Christian ought to have something good to say. Amen. We ought, to, we ought to search our heart tonight if we can't find something good to say about everybody. Amen. We're living in a day and a time where criticism seems to be everywhere. We ought to come. This ought to be a place when we gather together and that we admonish one another that we admonish one another when we see each other in town, that we provoke each other to live right, to do right, that we're on each other's side, that we're not against each other, amen, that we're for each other. I believe that would, uh, that would go a long way uh, this day and time, uh, that we would find something good to say. Uh, Ephesians 4.29 says this. It said, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of uh, your mouth, but that which is good to be used of edifying that it may minister grace to the hearer. Oh my, how many times am I, have I been guilty? How many times have we been guilty of saying things that don't admonish, admonish grace to the hearer? There's some, I, I remember one situation in my life when I was pastoring over in Taylorsville we, we would always go in there every Sunday night after service. They had the cheapest baby milk, and that's when Hope was a baby. Amen. And we would go in there, and I would get, uh, we would get baby milk. And you know you can't go in Walmart and just get one thing. you got to go about 19 aisles. You know, you know that's just a rule. So, and I was walking by. I did not know these people. I, I still do not know these people. They was huddled up in the middle of Walmart talking about, their church and it was not good did it did it administer grace to the hear or what I heard broke my heart I thought wow in the middle of Walmart they're talking about their pastor they're talking about their church they're talking about what's wrong and I thought right there I, I, I should have probably should have went back there and said this is what's wrong this is what's wrong with your church amen because it is not admonishing anybody. It's tearing down, pulling down, ripping down. And everybody knows in here, words hurt. Whoever, whoever wrote that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Hey, obviously they didn't have a clue what they was talking about. Right? Hey, because words hurt a lot of times. But he's admonishing us. He said that no... Uh, right there, let me just read it again. No corrupt communication should proceed out of our mouth that we should not. That gets rid of every uh, negative talk, all the negative talk, and promotes positive talk, the love and the admonishing one another. God help us uh, that we would not have corrupt, proceeding, corrupt things proceeding out of our mouth. Uh, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 18, 21, uh, it said, Life uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Wow! Did you hear that? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And a lot of times, if you're talking negative and talking down and talking down on things, we're talking death. Listen, hey, we learned today we've got life. If you're here for the morning service, praise God, Jesus has given us life. And life, not just life, but more abundant. God help us today that we would understand that. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. May God help us, help me and you, that we would should speak, that we should speak life to people. How do we speak life? We speak the truth of God's word. We speak hope. We speak what God has encouraged us to do. May the Lord help us to speak encouragement and exhort one another speak truth in love listen I know sometimes there's things have to be said you know maybe correction or something made uh, if, if something is gone wrong or whatever I understand that 
But w the way we do it is we try to do it in love. We don't try to rip their head off and make them feel bad about what they're doing. We try to uh, encourage them, you know, in the Lord. Uh, we, we would, you know, the old saying is talk to people like you'd like to be treated or treat people the way you wanted to be treated. You know, that'll, that'll help us. Uh, and it'll go a long way. But we can speak truth. Henry Blackaby said one time, you can say anything you want to to anybody. It's just how you say it, right? And we've got to come to that place that we speak in love, that we care uh, about people, that we admonish them in the Word of God. The fourth thing, the assembly. Let's talk about the assembly. Uh, it says right here, forsaking not the assembly of ourselves together as a manner of some is. But there it is, exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Let's talk about our assembly. We are living in a day and a time where many do not value the assembly of getting together. It is going out the, it, it's, it's going away. The value of assembly is going away. It, it is, we have value, we value many other things more important than the assembly of believers coming together. There are many things get in the way of the assembly. But he is telling us and encouraging us not to forsake the assembling together. Now, during this time when they, the writer wrote the book of Hebrews, I, I've done a little research. I, wanna know, I wanted to know why he told them that. Why did he tell them not to forsake the assembling together? They were, what was going on then was persecution. My mind went back to what preacher preached last week on persecution. Okay? They're, they were afraid that if they were assembled together, that they would be broken into, could be arrested, could be tortured, could be put to death. That's what they were running from. That's what they were hesitating, pulling back from the assembly because they were crashing in, tearing up buildings, burning buildings, killing people, killing their children, taking their children as prisoners. They were doing a lot of things. So when you look in the light of that context, of that scripture, then we today, then it, we flip it. Why in the world are we forsaking the assembly because we're too busy it is not we, I do not come out of the fear of persecution it could happen it, I mean somebody could come in the church I, I don't know it could happen we pray it don't uh, we have security out there I mean we took as precaution as we can uh, and I, I feel pretty safe uh, I mean I feel real safe at the house of God I'm I'm not worried, uh, but why do we why do we allow things to come in our way from our assembly? What is keeping me away? It is my faith. I'm, we got to go all the way back to where we started. We're holding fast to our profession of faith. Now, does coming to church save me? No. Hey, but I'm coming to church because I am saved. That I'm coming to be encouraged. I'm coming to exhort you. I'm coming to be exhorted. Amen. We're coming to admonish one another. When you're going through something, we pray for you. We lift you up. We, we want to get behind you and let you know you're not alone. Hey, that's, that's, we're here. The assembling of ourselves together. So we see uh, that, that the writer is telling us not to forsake the assembling to, of ourselves together. Be a part of the church. Be a part of the assembly. Don't forsake it. There are many things. We get things in front of us that pulls us away from the assembly. But God help us tonight that we would be faithful to the assembly, uh, the, the assembling together of ourselves. Why? He said, but exhorting one another. What do we do when we hadn't seen a brother or sister at the house of God? 
in a while. We don't fuss at them. We exhort them. We call them and say, we missed you. We want you to come back. Are there anything we can do? How can we help you? Exhort them to be to go back if they're saved, to go back to their profession of faith, to go back and see what the Lord has done for them. God, help us that we would exhort them. May God help us. As I said, folks, view the assembly this day and time is not so important. It's, it's, a, it's a, growing, a growing trend, if you will. I don't know where it's coming from, uh, but that's, that's where it's going that they're, they're, they're not so much on the assembling of ourselves together. But God has told us and encouraged us not to forsake that. That is something that is important to every believer, everyone that professes Jesus Christ. That is something that is so important. Uh, our, I view the church uh, as we view it as a place of help, a place of hope, a place that we assemble together. Today we prayed. I just thought about today's service. When we were here this morning, we prayed for, we celebrated uh, breast cancer survival, cancer survival. We, we prayed for a cure for cancer. We did that in the assembly today. We prayed. We heard preaching today in the assembly. We've sung together in the assembly. The assembly is very important. It is a place of prayer. It is a place of worship. We've worshiped today. At least I hope we have. I hope that we have praised today in the assembly. I hope and pray that we have given thanksgiving to God in the assembly. Oh my. And it shows our dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ in our, in our assembly. When I think about the assembly, I want you to think about this. In our assembly, some of the best friends in the world I have found in the assembly when we come together. You think about that. If it wasn't for the assembly of ourselves together, I wouldn't know half of y'all. It is Jesus Christ that have brought us together. And he brings us together in that assembly this is what comes out of the assembly, friendships. You think about this. I thought about Tyler and Brooke. I thought about this. I was over in Taylorsville. I come back to Caldwell County. A year later, I got a son-in-law. And I don't call him a son-in-law. I call him a son. Amen. I got a son out of the assembly. It's the assembly. There are people that come together together. They end up married, and they, they get the marriages out of the assembly. That's a good place to find a spouse in the assembly. Amen? I reminded one time there was a guy crying at the back door, and the preacher asked him, said, what in the world is wrong? And he is crying, tears running down his face, and he said, I want you to pray for my wife. He said, what's wrong with your wife? He said, she drinks all the time. He said, oh, my goodness. He said, how can, you know, he said, where did you find, where did you meet her? He said, the bar. <laughs> Amen. Hey, I'd say the assembly is a good place to meet your, your future husband or, or wife. Amen. Your spouse. That's in the assembly. We see babies raised uh, in the assembly. And they just, they are, they're just in here part of the family, in the assembly. And then I don't understand why people want to do away with the assembly when there is so much good comes out of the assembly. When we hear preaching and praising and, and, and praying and thanksgiving and, and we hear all of these things and we, we gain friendships and uh, relationships out of the assembly. And that's why God has so put it together that we, he said forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Now he calls it the assembly right here, but I call it the church. That's where we gather. Amen. I love the church. I'm glad I'm part of the church. God bless and bless the church. Uh, best friends, long life 
Friendships have come out of the assembly. Got a friend, pastor friend in Georgia. Uh, I do not talk to him every day. I'm, it may be months that I do not talk to him. But it is amazing when he calls or I call him right back. It's that same relationship. And it all came from the assembly of God's people coming together. That's the value of the church. Why do we stay away? I'm not sure. I don't want to know why. Uh, I, I'm, I'm telling you, the value is there for the assembly. May God help us. The writer that penned the book of Hebrews it, it is so trying to persuade us to be a part of the assembly. Not the, you know, people talk, I've heard people say it, you have too. They're hypocrites down at the church. They're hypocrites down there. Well, they're hypocrites at Walmart, but that don't keep nobody away. Amen. Uh, we keep going to Walmart. But God help us, God help us, that we would be a part of the assembly. Romans chapter number 12 and verse number 17. Why, why come to the assembly? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. When we come to the assembly, we hear the word of God. We hear truth. Thank God. You say you think the word of God can change people? Sure I do. Sure I do. All you have to do is hear it. Hear the word of God. The truth. We, we so need the assembly. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you these last things that I'm done right here. But he says, but he says right there as you see the day approaching. I don't want to scare nobody. Instead of 2 days a week, we might have bump it up to 5 days a week. Amen. People 5 days a week. He says as you see the day approaching. Number 1, I want to say quickly. Quickly. Number one, because the days are evil. Listen, we're living in evil days. We're living in wicked times. Every one of us, every one of us are tempted daily. Amen? Tempted. The temptations are out there. Hey, we need to come for the exhort to admonish. Hey, we need each other to come. He said, and the much more as you see the day approaching. What day? The evil day. We're living in evil days. And I got a whole outline on that, but I'll save it to another time. What else is another day? The day, the day of Jesus Christ's return. We, we, should, we should know Jesus is coming. Jesus could come tonight. Amen. Glory be to God. He could come. I don't know. The Bible says no man knows the day or the hour when he's coming, but he is coming. So that day is coming. I know that day is coming. The third day that I think that we ought to consider, the more. What day? The judgment day. Every one of us in here will give an account of himself to God. 1 Corinthians talks about a day. It is called giving an account, the Christian giving their account of their life at the Bema seat judgment. We're not getting out of judgment. We still give an account for our life. We don't lose our salvation, but we stand and give an account of our life at the beam of seat judgment. We give an account to ourselves to Christ. And then that, the other judgment, that there is no hope that the lost are going to be judged, is the great white throne judgment. If you appear at the great white throne judgment, you're cast into the lake of fire. So that day is coming. That day is coming. The, those days, he says, as you see the day approaching, there are a couple days that God spoke to me about, about that. As you see the day approaching, oh, God, help us that we would come to the place that we would walk, our faith would be without wavering. Why is it so important that I live every day the same? Because... I can witness to you, I can tell you about Jesus, and if I, then I turn around and then my actions does not match my words. Actions a lot of times are way more heavy than words. Paul said, Paul said he did not come with word only. He said, I, don't, I did not come to you in word only. He said, I come to you in power, 
and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Paul said, I came. He said, I didn't come just talking it. He said, I come living it in front of you. So my question tonight is, are we living our life? Are we walking, not wavering? Are we walking straight? Our faith being established? Are we living out our faith? Are we, am I being faithful every day to my profession of faith in Jesus Christ? Let's bow our heads just for a moment of time and ask the Lord to help us. Father, we love you. We give you honor and glory, Father. We thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, that it would find a lodging place in some heart. I pray, Lord, for our faith. I pray, God, that we would live by faith, walk by faith. God, we thank you that we can trust you, look to you at all times. God, we just submit this service into your hands. Lord, I pray that you would speak to your people, draw us closer, help us to understand the importance, God, of the assembly. God, I pray, Lord, that your perfect will will be done. Lord, I pray, God, if there's somebody here tonight lost and without Christ, that today would be the day of salvation. They would hear the word of God, and, Lord, it would come alive in their life, and that they would understand their need of a Savior, understanding they're a sinner and lost without Christ. Lord, I pray that your perfect will would be done. Every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe God spoke to you tonight. You just slip your hand up and say, Lord, spoke to me. Would you pray for me? In closing, would you pray for me? Anybody at all? Anybody at all? Lord, spoke to my heart. Amen. All right. God bless you all over the church. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Have your will and way, God, in the, in the assembly. God, search our hearts tonight. God, may we hold fa fast to the profession of faith. God, I pray, Lord, that you'd help us tonight to worship and honor you. Help us as we go forth into our communities, into our schools. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us tonight. Lord, that we would live our faith before a lost and a dying world unwavering. God, that we'd be committed to the cause of Christ. Help us to exhort one another, encourage one another. Lord, help us be uh, close to you, walk with you, talk with you, to be found in prayer and seeking your face daily. Father, help us. Give us every opportunity, Lord, to honor and glorify you. We'll thank you for what you do. In Christ's name, amen. 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 All right.